Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to take a look at the annotations element. And if you go to the left side menu and you click on annotations, you're going to notice there are going to be five different panels here. And the annotations actually give you another element that you can place onto your video at different points in the timeline. So for example, you'll notice that in annotations, you'll find the text element. So if you want to write something on your video to appear, you can do that by dragging this element onto the track. And when you do that and you actually move your cursor, you'll notice that the element will show up inside of the presentation. So in this particular case, we can move this element any place that we want. And as always, we can actually change the element or the nature of the element in the properties area. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the color of the writing. And we can change that in this particular case to black. And you'll notice that that'll change in that case. What we can also do is we can also move this element to a point in time in the video that we want it to show up. So for example, let's say that we didn't want this to appear until midway through the video. We could do that. And so this annotation would not appear until that time. And so there are several ways for us to alter our animation and all of them will take place inside of the properties area. Now, we can actually do more than one annotation. So for example, if we wanted to do an arrow, all we would need to do is to drag that arrow either into the box or we can drag it onto the timeline, either one. When we do that, what we're doing here is we are making this arrow a part of the video. And of course, this arrow has an element that we can change. We can make the timing of this element independent of the other one that we place on the timeline. And you'll notice here that this is going to be on the video longer than the other element that we place there. So annotations give us lots of flexibility when we want to add things to our video to give us more ways of highlighting things that we want our viewer to see. In the second panel, we have arrows. And arrows work in the very same way. We can drag those arrows onto the timeline. We can rotate those arrows. We can change the nature of those arrows in the properties area. We can even change the thickness of the line. So once again, all of the annotations give us things that we can actually place in the video wherever we want. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice about this particular annotation is that Camtasia put it on top of the other ones. So if we were to raise our cursor on the right side, we can see that this is now on track five. As we said, it's a good practice to rename the tracks so that you know what's there. We have even more options within each one of the annotations in the style area. For example, we can make something bold, or we can make an element what's called urban. Again, we'd be dragging a new element there, or abstract. In the third panel, we have shapes. And in some cases, what we might do is we might pull the cursor forward and we might add the shape into the presentation at a different point. And so if that's the case, we're just going to drag this element right into our video. We can size this element up. Or size it back down. We have a fourth panel. Now the fourth panel is very important and there are some elements there that we want to take a few minutes to actually talk about for a minute. Now you're going to notice that first 
there is a blur element. And the blur element is going to help us if we have personal information that we need to display on our screen, we can actually blur that information out. And one of the ways that we do that is we can then drag this element onto the screen. And you'll notice then that the element becomes blurrier. What's on the screen is going to be blurry to the audience. And we can make that appear as long as we need it to. You'll notice I'm pulling out the timeline. When you are doing screen sharing video and you do not want to show personal information, you will be using the blur key very often. Now, there are some similar keys that we can actually use. We can actually spotlight something. So in this particular case, we can actually bring our cursor and spotlight an element. We're going to take the spotlight out. We can highlight something. Once again, remember, we can alter all of these elements. When we click inside of the element and we go to the properties area, we can pixelate something which works very similar to the blur, but has a different effect. And once again, we can change this in the properties area. And we can lengthen or shorten it on the timeline. Also in the annotations area, we have the sketch motion callouts. Now, also in the annotations area, we have the sketch motion callouts. And sketch motion callouts are very handy to use when you want to highlight something and you want to draw your user's attention. And you can do that by dragging in a sketch annotation. In this particular case, we're going to drag in a loop circle going to have it cover all of this information. So what we want to do is want to take a look to see how the, the animation is going to look. We want it to cover the entire section. And with the sketch animation in Camtasia, this is actually going to do motion drawing. And we're going to be able to see this right on our screen. And once again, we can control this element in our properties area. Want to change the color if we want to change the thickness. And if we even want to change the amount of time that it's going to take to draw the element. We can actually flip the element vertically or horizontally. So again, always remember that when you drag an element in, you can always make changes to how it's actually going to appear by working with the properties. Because this is a special element, one thing we can do is we can see how it's actually going to appear in the timeline in our actual video. So let's do that. All we have to do is pull it to that point in the timeline. Then we're going to press play. And you'll notice that Camtasia actually draws on our video. So sketch motion is very handy. And once again, um, you can have it to appear as long as you like, but you'll still want to control the time that it takes to draw the element in this area. Now, one additional element in the annotations area are going to be what are called keystroke callouts. Now, keystroke callouts are very effective in sharing with your viewer what they need to do in order to replicate your effects that you are doing on your screen. So, for example, let's say that you are clicking Control S for save and you're doing it at this point in the video. So what would you do? Well, we'd shorten it to just talk about the period of time where the person is going to be talking about Control-S. 
and then we would change this. So you'll see now in the properties area, just as we've seen everything else, I'm going to make this control plus S. And we're going to head to the properties area and we're going to make this control S to indicate save. So we're going to place our keys in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the motion on our keyboards. So we're not going to type in control S. We're going to hit the control then S button. And that will appear in this block. And then we'll drag it to the place that we want it to be. Now, let's say that there's a different point in the timeline that you wanted to indicate that your viewer needed to paste something. So we drag the keystone call out either into the timeline or into the video itself. We would time it. And then we would go to the keys and we would click control V indicating paste. And so now what we have is another way of being able to get our viewer to understand exactly what they need to do to get the results that we are teaching them. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.